Hello, my name is Steve Faulkner and this is Encore by John Graham. Before I do this, can you please listen to some notices? This video is brought to you by me, uh, owner and creator of OnlineMagic.co. That's my membership site. Do check it out. Don't take my word for it. 900 plus videos, live sessions every week, all of them uploaded, 150 of them so far, uh, with special guests, David Williamson, Noel and Roddy from Trick Trick Boom, recently did a wonderful session on creativity, John Allen, uh, all the types of magic you could wish to learn and get better at for all levels. So check it out, onlinemagic.co, and do check out the reviews. Uh, don't just take my word for it. I'm, of course, of course very biased. And I've got a podcast. It is called Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. Do check that out on, well, wherever you get your podcasts, actually. It was just on one of them, but now it's everywhere. Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other ones uh, that I don't know much about. But do search Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, and you'll find one episode at time recording, but another one going up very, very soon, and some really interesting uh, things in the pipeline. So check that out. Thank you very much. Right. Stage by Stage was the first book by John Graham. I absolutely loved it. Published by ba Vanishing Ink, just full of gold. Absolutely adored it, loved it. Loads of great stuff, commercial stuff. And John is someone that goes out and does it and really truly believes in his own material. And I know that should be the case, but he, you know, I've talked to him and interviewed him and he's just really, really into sharing this stuff and make and wanting people to go out and perform it and adapt it. And that's the case with this. And what this is, this is a multiple selection act. Briefly, a multiple selection is where loads of people on a table or when you're on stage in the audience will choose a card. Uh, that card is controlled in some way or the, the group of cards, whether it's, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or more cards, uh, controlled and revealed one card at a time. And it's a routine I've been working on for a long time and tweaking and trying to get right. And because you can, you can really analyze it and go, well, when do you build up? When do you have a dip in it? When do you, when, what sort of revelation do you have as the finale? Are there callbacks in it, which is really important for this book? So as soon as this came out, I was all over it. He released it, was going to put it in stage by stage. It didn't feel right for the book. He said it didn't fit the format of the book and I kind of see why and I'm kind of glad he didn't because it means I've been able to study this on its own without the rest of the stuff kind of, you know, taking my, you know, when you read the whole book, it's very hard to know what to work on. Uh, with this, you don't have a choice. And I, like I said, I've spent a long time with this and, and really geeked out on it. And I think it's, it's interesting. It's a really interesting one. So, you do a multiple selection act, usually done, the cards revealed one at a time in an interesting way. There are a few problems with a multiple selection act, depending on whose hands they're in. I find the selection process can be quite monotonous, especially if there's 10 people at a table. And some people say that's too many people, but I'd quite like it when it builds up. But also that thing of choose a card, especially if you're at an event where there's a bit of sort of surrounding noise and stuff it can be quite difficult and by the time you got to the end of it I felt sometimes that people are losing interest and I know there's ways of getting around of it around that and I've played with that and this concentrates on the act being longer so this is really you know if you want to do the whole thing you sit with people without that kind of noise I think you know he sits up to kind of 18 minutes 15 18 minutes or something so great for stage Great for really using it as a piece of theatre itself, but it's modular, meaning, of course, you can do four of these productions, revelations, you can play with it, you can just take a couple out so you can adapt it. This is to be adapted, I think, but I can imagine it working as a whole thing, of course, because he has very, he's really thought about the structure of this, but... You, I've kind of put a few of these things into my multiple selection to play with them and see how they feel. And there's been a few surprises. What he's done is he, the, the two kind of emphases on this routine is the fact that they are all signed cards. So straight away that takes the thing of people forgetting their cards, which I often do in a multiple selection, especially if there's loads of them and like they've had a few drinks or whatever, all the cards are signed. So you don't have to do the thing of what was your card or checking the card. They know straight away it's the card, even if they can't, you know, they see their signature on it. He uses the, the, the times when people are signing the cards are used 
for economy and to do what you need to do. So there is loads of misdirection built into this. And that's important because some of the things you read and go, oh, am I gonna have time to do that? You realize that when they're signing a card, that's all good. And the emphasis is also callbacks. And this, if you know, as he says in the introduction, if you know about comedy, you can just mention something that was mentioned earlier and it will get a laugh. There's a really nice feeling of joining things together, like keeping going back to the same person. That person does that for a living and you mention that later on in a joke. It doesn't even have to be that funny. It's just a nice feeling when you see someone do it in an act. And it also gives you that feeling that they've really, really worked on it. And it can feel like improvisation, etc. But, and the callbacks in this are basically, most of the time when you, someone chooses a card, signs it, you've already done a couple of revelations, every time you find their card, there is a kicker where you also find the previous cards. And it, callbacks are nothing brand new to multiple selections because you are often call back to a card that was chosen earlier. So it's kind of been built in some routines, but this really is the kind of running thread of this. But it also feels very different because most of these revelations aren't flashy revelations. And that's what I've found in my multiple selection. I've done like top shots and this and that and the color changes. And sometimes it's a bit overwhelming for a spectator that, you know, the first few are like amazing. And then they kind of, it all gets a bit dry. So you've got to mix it up a bit. With this, and I think sometimes we feel like we've got to rush through it because there's so much. With this, he does the opposite. There's a load of people. He takes time with all the revelations until the end where you get this kind of quick fire bang, bang, bang of the last few cards and then the big callback is that you find all of them somewhere that I'm not going to ruin for you. And I'm not going to do the thing I usually do is go through all the tricks, all the revelations of the book, because I think it will ruin it. Now, there are uh, things in this book. There's a couple of bits where I kind of went, I've seen that before, and it's very laborious and process heavy the way you get to a card. But actually, I can imagine in this, because there's stuff surrounding it, and people are kind of invested in it, and they're in the rhythm of this thing that is going to go on. You know, it's not like a quick trick. So, you know, you've got to choose your audience with this, that they will be invested in that part of the process. Saying that, I have found alternatives. So there's, there's one where you kind of up jog every other card three or four times when you go through the deck. It takes quite a long time. Those of you that can color card, you can do it that way. So it's, this is to be played with, adapted. But the learning in this isn't necessarily, here's a trick, you can do this, 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 and this. It's giving you different options and reminding you how strong maybe some of these more classic ways of producing a card can be in the right environment. And it doesn't always have to be flashy, look how clever I am. This can be magical in a, in a kind of deeper way that the audience connect to in a different way of ding, there's a card, bang. You know, they kind of, with a multiple selection, they know exactly what's gonna happen every time. And with this, I think there's a few moments in it where you go, they kind of go, where's this going? And really magical. Skill-wise, it is not, difficult stuff there's no real knuckle busting stuff in this now there is a palm especially when you're when you're doing the finale there is a, a pharaoh shuffle which is a partial partial pharaoh shuffle but the good thing about this is you can take those two bits out of it come back to them when you've practiced them and then try them out and both of those are quite forgiving and as i said they have loads and loads of misdirection built into them i think this is a really lovely book. I love books which take one thing and in depth, but also don't do it over 300 pages to get some filler. This is, you know, like 55, I think it's 55 pages long. Is that 35 or 55? No, it's 35 pages long. Amazing. 35 pages long. And it feels like there's so much in this. And I've got books like a massive that feel like there's nothing in them. And I'm not going to say what they are. Um, so I think anybody buying this will get a lot out of it. I'll be really interested to see if any of you have taken this because it's been out for a while. And let's remember, these books are ageless, right? It doesn't get better the more we go on, I don't think. So don't think, oh, it's been out a while. Do check it out. It's obviously affordable because it's not a big volume. And I think a lot of you will get a lot out of it. So that's uh, Encore by John Graham. Do please use the link below if you want to have a look at it. And uh, do check out all of John's stuff. Give him a Google. He's a great creator a lovely human being you know which is which i think you feel in his magic as well and this is a good easy enjoyable read as well there are a few couple of moments in it where i kind of had to reread them because i couldn't quite i couldn't quite get what they meant the pharaoh bit i kind of kept doing wrong and i kept rereading it and rereading it and, kept, and then i realized oh i've done that and maybe the language was a little bit ambiguous um but it's the sort of thing you read and, and you, you, if you look at it and go, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it means that. 
you know, think about what you're reading. But that only happened a couple of times, and I think that was probably me rather than the text. It's really nicely uh, put together, really ni nicely illustrated and designed, as with all of Vanished Inc.'s books, uh, and I love it. Right, so that's Encore by John Graham, Multiple Selection Act. Um, and do obviously check out Stage by Stage. And now, onlinemagic.co, that's the thing that runs all this. Without that, I would have to give this up. Okay, the only reason I can afford to do this is because that brings a trickle of income in which pays my bills, or some of them. Uh, so onlinemagic.co, and check out the podcast, uh, and of course my Instagram, the podcast Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, Instagram, at Steve Faulkner, or at Real Magic Re Review, if you just want the magic stuff and me waffling on in stories, and, uh, and all the other places you will find stuff you already know. Like and subscribe. Have a great one. Cheers.